Now that we have all the keyable parameters set up properly, the last stage before enveloping is going to be in storing a pose for this character. And once again, this comes back to the importance of the model node in XSI. At the moment, it's just kind of holding these objects as children, as a container, which is great. Uh, I'm going to switch the objects only filter uh, to show all objects and their attributes or parameters. If you look underneath that model, you can see that a model has some core attributes like kinematics for movement, visibility for hiding, and display for changing some other display attributes. But one of the core features of models is that they contain mixers, and a mixer just gives us a way of storing poses or sequences of poses on a character in a library that we can call back at any time. That's the job of the mixer, and a mixer only appears when you store a pose or use shapes or decide to use audio um, in, in, your, in your scene. In fact, the scene root is a kind of a model that can hold this information as well. But again, if you have four different characters and all of them are sitting under the scene root, it gets pretty difficult to figure out what part belongs to what character, especially when you're using um, a lot of action clips, uh, pose clips, things of that nature. To store an action, it's very simple. We've set up all the keyable parameters, so I can now just drag a box around the entire character. You want to make sure that the model node itself doesn't get selected. We don't actually want to store the, the position, rotation, or scale of the model. It's actually going to throw off the mixer. So you just want to make sure that all of the parts are inside of the model, but we're not selecting the model itself. So we have 70 parts selected. And to store an action now, I want to make sure I'm in the Animate menu cell. And if I look down under the Actions category, I can store actions and then reapply them back to the character. I also have a tool for creating connection templates to map animation between very different characters. If I look at the Store menu, the Store menu comes in four different categories. I can store current values, so basically snapshots, poses, single frame poses of the character or different parts. I can store function curves, uh, sequences of animation, walk cycles, fight cycles, things like that. And I have a few other categories down here for storing various other pieces of information. So in this case, I'm going to store the keyable parameters because I've set those up. And I'm going to store them at the current value. I'm at frame one right now. My character is in a T-pose. There's no animation on the character. So it makes a good sense to save the pose at this point. So if I store the keyable parameters, current values, you'll notice a mixer appears. There's actually a little custom property page that temporarily appears as well too, the store action dialog box. And all we need to do is provide a name for our pose. So we have a mixer that's empty until we give our pose a name. And this pose represents the character before the envelope. So this is the pre-envelope rest pose. So rest pose to me is always the pose that you bring back to at the point of binding. I can see that there's 243 attributes stored in this pose and the rest of the attributes here default in and out and what we want to do when we're creating source we can ignore those for now just press OK. So our pose now is stored in the mixer and a folder of sources has been created for us and uh, we've got an animation source and there's our pose there. To actually use this pose we want to highlight the pose and apply it as an action back to the character. If you look at the bicep, for example, and you look at the angle of the bicep, 0x, 0y, 14.6419z, if I can find the bicep in this action, if I click on the action, I should be able to find the left bicep pretty easily. scroll through this list here and I'm missing it here it's in here somewhere there it is left bicep bone so you'll notice the same thing the left bicep bone rotates Z 14.6418 and it just rounds it to four decimal places but we have more precision in the Explorer of course so that's all it's doing is storing the the values of those objects at that point in time so if I decide to take the character and rotate it. It's very easy to pop the character back into position, so I might use this to test the envelope out, but when I need to return back to my bind pose, I take the, the pose itself and apply it as an action back to the character. Now this does not store keyframes, 
it simply just copies and pastes the values in this action back onto the body parts that it finds. So the action actually just lines up with the names of the objects you've created. So it's a very cool way of preserving these bind poses. And I tend to change this bind pose very often. As we build the rig up, we're going to add more and more objects, and those objects will not be accounted for in this particular action. So as we build new objects, we just add more bind poses and update it. And as long as we keep everything named, we should be in, in good shape. I'm going to close up this mixer for now. So we're at the point now where we can bind the character to the skeleton.